The beauty of the herpetofauna keeping hobby, which includes the captive keeping of reptiles and amphibians, isn't limited to the animals that we keep. I believe that a naturalistic setup that meets the natural environment that your animal is kept in leads to an overall better keeping experience. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I created these beautiful naturalistic terrariums custom built by yours truly. These guys are 22 by 17 by 36 inches tall. They have some good ventilation for chameleons. I know I had a great time building these enclosures and I think it's time to show you guys how I built this one specifically. Before we hop into the video, I just wanted to say if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you do so. Link is on the screen somewhere for you guys to check out. As well as in the show more tab, you can also go find yourself some awesome merch. You can follow me on Twitter. There's a couple different avenues for you guys to find me and follow me, so go do that. I did have one last thing to say. If you guys are interested in any of the products that I mentioned in the video or alternatives, I'm going to leave a whole list in the description down below for you guys to click the show more, scroll through. They will be Amazon affiliate links, so if you do click on them and choose to purchase something, I do make a little tiny kickback off that. So if you're looking for a way to help me out, then that's definitely one way to do so. Let's get into the first step, foaming your background. When foaming a tank, always make sure to shake the can as hard as you can for about 30 to 45 seconds. In this build, I'll be using the dry lock method, so the type of foam used doesn't really matter. If you are curious as to what I'm using, I'm using the touch and foam landscape. Uh, this is a black type of foam. The black type tends to be a little bit easier to see and is also easier to cover up in the silicone method, which we'll talk about later. When applying the foam, you can see that I'm doing kind of like a crisscross pattern, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter as long as you cover all the surface area that you want to cover. Once you're done foaming, let it cure for 24 hours. In this build, I actually foamed a large tree trunk into the background. So what I did to prepare it for that was allow the previous foam to cure for 24 hours. I then carved out a circular shape. I put the tree trunk in there, test fitted it, moved it around, then took it out, foamed down the gap, and then foamed around the tree trunk. So now that the foaming's done, now it's time to play some fun games and use just a standard utility knife. Uh, you can use a pocket knife, you can use whatever sharp blades that you have. This is going to be very handy when it comes to carving your foam. By the end of your probably several hour marathon, you will have to have cut all of the foam on the background. The goal of this is to just increase the surface area, like I mentioned, for whatever medium you're going to use, whether it's the dry lock or the silicone, to adhere to the background. Now this carving process can take quite a while. I personally think that this is really the part where you take your tank from being just an average build to really making it look stellar. I've seen a bunch of tanks where people don't bother to carve it. I think it just looks tacky. That's me personally. You guys do what you want. And now that your couple hour marathon is finished and complete, now it's time to decide what you're going to be using for your background material. In this build, like I mentioned numerous times, it's going to be dry lock. This is something that I went years without actually trying. And finally, one of my good buddies, Troy Goldberg here on YouTube, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check him out if you want. He showed me the ways of dry lock. And I really honestly think that the silicone days are kind of done. I don't like it, it's not very much fun, it's messy, it's disgusting, it's smelly. The biggest downside I've found with the silicone and coconut is it tends to fall off over time. As you can see in this waterfall tank that I built about two years ago, a lot of the substrate has fallen off the wall and it's just left us with this very white, unnatural looking surface where nothing really grows on it because it's silicone. Now in order to do a dry lock background, you see all the equipment laid out in front of you. There's the dry lock itself, there is some cement colorant, there's also a stir stick and a catch cup. Another thing you're going to need is a paintbrush. Now if you are in Canada, I will mention that dry lock is pretty hard to find. You can only find it at home hardwares. Uh, you might be able to order it online some places, but the only place that I've been able to find it is home hardware. And for those of you guys in the States, it's everywhere, figure it out yourselves. It's literally everywhere, it's easy to find. The application process is so simple. It's time consuming, but what I end up doing is just turning on some jams or a live stream on Instagram and painting away. All you really need is cheap paint brushes. That's what I use. They work perfectly. You don't need anything expensive. All you do is apply your first layer. Now the first layer is white. It doesn't make sense wasting a lot of the cement coloring to turn your 
dry lock a different color when you're not gonna be able to see it in the first place. Now there's no secret to applying it. It's literally just paint the entire background, try and get all the nooks and crannies, and you're off to the races. Although this build did not go totally according to plan. So after this first coat of dry lock, I have run into an issue. Some of you guys might see it right off the bat. Some of you might not. What the issue is, is over there, you can see that the drying dry lock must have some sort of shrinking effect on the actual foam itself. So it begins to shrink away from the glass. You can see the gap there. It's not ideal. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is something along the lines of the old background style where you basically spread silicone. I'm going to mash silicone all in here. And then what I'm going to do is put on some coconut core. It's not going to be perfect. I really wish that this kind of thing didn't happen. Uh, there are alternatives as well. I'm just going to be trying this out and seeing how it works. Uh, alternatively, you could probably just cut out another line there and then re-foam inside and it should in theory work uh, especially now because the foam will expand and hit this dry lock and shouldn't shrink away from that so if the silicone thing doesn't work then that's what i'll end up doing but uh fingers crossed now after i fixed the gap issue that ended up occurring i ended up putting on two to three more layers of dry lock in total you're going to be looking for three to five layers depending on how thick you apply it and the finished look that you want. After three, you're typically okay, but if you really want a smooth rock look, you might need to do a few more. The extra layers also add some extra protection against accidental puncture, so that's something to be aware of as well. One of the beauties of dry lock is that you don't have to be overly cautious when you're applying it. Now, if you're applying it around wood, obviously try and be careful because getting it on wood is a lot harder to scrape off. But around the glass, you really don't have to be careful at all. You can see here that I paint like an inch up the glass. All you have to do to remove it is grab a razor blade and just scrape. It comes off really easily. All right, I will admit a lot has happened from the last clip that you guys have seen. I ended up adding some horizontal branches to the tank using the same method as I did with the giant tree trunk in the back, but now it's time to express your creative side. These paints that I showed on screen are basically just to add shadows, details, little things that you guys can think of that you want to add to your background. In this case, all I ended up adding was shadows and highlights to the rock of various different colors. I also did a couple dry brushes worth of a more brown tone just to make it look a little bit more weathered. In order to add a little bit more detail to the background, after I used my dry brush, I ended up going to Michael's, picking up some coarse sponges, dipping those sponges in various different colors of green, and making some mossy looking patches on the rock wall. I was kind of rushing to get this done because I really needed a new tank for the chameleon, and this is what I ended up with. Alrighty, here we have the finished background. It is looking very very nice we have all the lights attached i'm using the skylight leds uh, if you're looking for some in the states or even in canada i might be able to bring some in for you frosker the company will be able to get you some but we have uvb up top there we got heat and we got the cage so now all that's left to do is set up the interior of the cage starting with the drainage layer. You guys will notice that I do have a bulkhead back there. That is so I can drain it into a bucket. Eventually when I have all three tanks that are 36 inches tall set up, I will have them in a drain system just so I can open a ball valve and drain the tanks if they ever get too full. This one is actually doing very, very well. It does not need the drainage at all. You can see the roots growing through there. Enough of my blabbering, let's get to building this tank. Now for the drainage layer, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need hydrogen or hydro bowls. You can find these at different hydroponic shops or even some garden centers. They sell them in giant 50 liter bags, so you can buy that and be set for a very long time. And then this is just window screen. You can buy this from ZoomEd at your local pet shop or whatever, but I just go and buy fiberglass window mesh and that's exactly what it is. I'm actually gonna have to use two pieces of it because I was at the end of my roll, so I have to use a little bit extra to make this work. Now, because I 
have that bulkhead, I need to at very least cover the bulkhead with the hydrogen. So that's about an inch and a half from the bottom of the tank that I need to fill and that is what's gonna have to happen. When adding hydro balls into your setup, make sure you wash them first because it is disgusting the amount of dirt and debris that comes off them when you're washing them. The ideal depth of your hydro balls kind of varies. I would say no less than an inch and all the way up to two or three inches depending on how heavily you're going to be misting. And it also helps determine how often you're going to drain your hydro ball area because the less amount of hydro balls, the more likely it is to fill up and saturate your soil, which is exactly the reason why we're adding this in here, is so that it doesn't saturate your soil. It's difficult to get this to lay flat because it was rolled up so tightly over the roll. So you can see here that I have left some excess on the sides and the front and the back of the tank. Essentially what this does is allow another barrier to prevent the substrate from going around or beside the glass and the substrate barrier. That way it doesn't mix with your drainage layer. It's now time to show you the substrate. We're going to be using the 32 ounce container as equal to one part. You can make that whatever part you want. I will leave links in the description to all the products or similar products to what I used for the substrate. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you go down to the links down below. They are Amazon affiliate links. So if you decide to buy one of them, you definitely help me out. I'm adding two parts jungle mix because this has peat as well as sphagnum moss in it, so it's going to be decent for plants. Two parts coconut core. Plants can't really grow in coconut core very well. A lot of people think they can, but coconut core has almost no nutrients and actually has quite high salinity. One and a half parts of repti bark is going to help with the drainage, as well as repti bark takes a long time to break down. So it's going to be one of the more long lasting components to this mix. Now for the nutrients part of this, we're going to be adding one part worm castings. These are organic worm castings. Now they're more available at garden centers, things like that. However, I got them at a local farmer. I'm going to be adding one part sand. This is just standard play sand. It is also going to be for drainage. I'll be adding one part organic topsoil. This is going to, again, help with more nutrients in the soil. And finally, for the last dose of nutrients that these guys are gonna get, I'm going to be using a half part of Tropica Aquarium Pelleted Soil Substrate. Now that you've heard what I'm putting into the substrate layer, it's time to get this stuff in the tank. Alrighty, and here is the final finished product. Um, I did add some water because it is pretty dry. So this is the finished product. It's relatively light actually, it breaks down decently easily and it should be good for growing some cool plants in. So enough talking, let's get to putting it in the tank. In this tank I added about 6 inches of substrate to the bottom because I knew I'd be adding some much larger trees and various different plants that needed a lot of root space to grow properly and to allow them to grow to their fullest extent. What's nice about the increased depths of hydro balls is that the roots will actually grow through the fiberglass mesh and into your drainage layer. So having a bigger drainage layer is also beneficial because there will be water down there that holds a lot of nutrients and these roots will be able to access those nutrients and put them into growth into your tank. Now speaking about plant growth, why don't we talk a little bit more about plant selection. Alrighty, and the time has come for the plant section of this video. Now you can see in their tank, I have the same umbrella plant. I have a Monstera Deliciosa, little baby. And then I also have a ficus tree, the ficus benjamina, that's variegata. Now unfortunately, I used up all my ficus in that tank, but I actually do have umbrella plant here in front of us. So I'm going to be using that in this build. These are all safe for them, so that's good. Not that these guys are super big plant eaters anyway. And then for some vine coverage and things, I'm trying my luck at some Passiflora. So this is the passion fruit vine, fresh cutting from upstairs, and then some of the gold philodendron uh, that was actually growing in their tank. So these guys are cuttings. There's nothing I really have to worry about in terms of soil. And this one, because I had to take it out to separate both, I actually just replaced the soil that the garden center had put in here and used my own vivarium safe mix. So I'm essentially going to shake off the roots in another box. So now's the challenging process of trying to fit these all into the tank. 
why don't you guys enjoy? And there we have it, everybody. That is the finished enclosure. I mean, look at those. I'm thinking of naming these two like the dueling dragons or something because they're housing chameleons and they're basically a mirrored image. I don't know if you can tell, but the wood in that tank is the same wood in this tank. Everything's basically done the exact same, which I think looks sweet. All right, and that does it for the ultimate chameleon build, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I did end up making it bioactive. I didn't film it. I did add springtails as well as isopods. But anyways, I really hope you guys learned something. I had a blast creating this tank. In the comments down below, make sure you let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, as well as if you want me to show you how I built these custom glass enclosures. The reason why I built this is because Exoterra makes a 24, 18, 36 tall, but honestly, for a cheaper price, I actually made my own at a custom size. These are built so that they can go side by side by side to fit in a six foot long rack, whereas your Exoterras won't do that because they have the little black rim around them. Exoterra, if you're watching this video and you've made it this far, please take those rims out. Just make them smaller at least. Now, if there is anything that I missed, like I said, throw it in the comment section. If you like this video, make sure you click that like button just to show me that you want to see more tutorials like this one. Remember, if you haven't followed me on Instagram, do what you got to do, man. Just, just fix it. It's fine. Just right here. Check it out. And don't forget to click that subscribe button because there's some epic content coming this month. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Later.